Hi, welcome to the next training session of SAP controlling part. Today's topic for training is cost element accounting and reconciliation. Let's check with the table of content which we'll be covering up in today's training part. The first is cost element accounting which will include introduction to cost element accounting types of cost element and then how we can create cost element that is creation of cost elements and the second part will be going up with is reconciliation ledger we'll look after the overview on reconciliation and the configuration steps for the reconciliation ledger so cost element accounting is the first master data in controlling area Cost element accounting provides with an overview of the cost and revenues that occur in an organization. There are two types of cost elements. One is primary element and second is secondary element. Primary element cost that originate outside the company. It relate directly to the income statements in the FI module and must be included in the FI chart of accounts whereas secondary element is the cost that results from internal allocation activities. There is no relation to the GL accounts in the FI module. These accounts are exclusively for cost accounting and are only maintained in the CO module for the controlling and the costing purpose. So the cost element accounting as we've been discussing within the controlling module there are four distinct master data types. One is cost element that which we'll be covering up. The next is cost center, activity type and the statistical key figures. Each is tightly integrated with the other to provide the basis for transactional postings in controlling. At the center of all the transactional activity are the cost elements. In controlling each posting in the cost accounting is linked to a cost element and at least one controlling object such as cost center or internal order is needed so as to get the document posted in the SAP system. Cost elements, specifically primary cost element, are linked to the general ledger in the FI module. Cost element accounting deals with the collection of cost and revenues within controlling and post to the reconciliation ledger. The cost element accounting is useful to post the cross company across business area posting to financial accounting. When the company is following cross company code, cross accounting concept are to be used, are to be followed. Cost elements are treated as cost carriers from financial accounting to the controlling or within the controlling module that is from one controlling object to the another controlling object. So the cost elements are nothing but general ledger or non-general ledger accounts used in the controlling part. If you move on to the types of cost elements, the primary cost element can be directly posted to or via the postings that occur in another module such as posting to FI or MM or ST module. The primary cost element is linked to a general ledger account that must be created first in FI module chart of accounts. So until you have a, a general ledger account you cannot create a cost element. The cost primary cost element can be created only after the creation of general ledger account in the FI module. Creation of general ledger account is 
a prerequisite to create a primary cost element. There is no primary cost element without a general ledger account. Primary cost element is other way called a general ledger account in the finance module. So the same can be said that within the controlling module, the primary element will work as a GL. Whereas in the secondary cost element part, the secondary cost element must be acted upon by another transaction that will determine the cost element, therefore posted only within controlling module. So the secondary cost element is used for the internal posting or internal transfer of cost from one object to another object within the controlling module. Secondary cost element can be created only in the controlling module itself. So the secondary cost element is not dependent on the general ledger as the case in the primary cost element is. These element categories cannot be changed in the controlling area once the transactional data are posted into the cost elements. Both primary and secondary cost element types can be broken down further to cost element categories which will be going through when we will be on the SAP screen that what are those different cost element categories all about. So let's move on to the next screen and now understand the difference between cost element versus GL account. As you can see on the screen, the left hand side is the financial accounting which includes your balance sheet accounts, adjustment accounts and income statement accounts. Often all we can say that the general ledger, accounts payable, accounts receivable, fixed assets or treasury which is a part of your financial accounting or the SAP FI module. Whereas on the other side is controlling which involves cost center accounting, internal order, product costing, profitability analysis and the most important the cost element as you can see over here. So the cost element is of two type one is of primary cost element and the secondary cost element. So as said the primary cost element is dependent on the general ledger. The primary cost element is created so as to book the cost from the FI module to the controlling module so as to get the data flow from the FI module to the controlling module. So all the income statement accounts needs to have a primary cost element so as to flow those costs. So you can create primary cost elements only for those ledger accounts which belongs to your income statement accounts like the revenues or the expenses. So the primary cost element is created only for revenues or expenses ledgers or you can see uh, you can say that the the ledger accounts belonging to the income statement. Whereas on the other side the balance it account or the adjustment accounts does not need any cost element to be created. So as we can see over here on the screen on one side no balance it account in the controlling is required. Whereas all primary cost element is linked to the income statement account directly. Whereas the secondary cost elements is no way linked to the financial accounting. Secondary cost element is independent within the controlling itself. Secondary cost element is used internally within CO and it has nothing to do with any of the other modules within the SAP system. 
So this gives you a better understanding of the cost element versus the GL account where how they are related to each other and how they are distinct from each other can be understood. Now moving on to the next is creation of cost elements. So as said the cost elements are actually the master data which needs to be created within the controlling module so as to flow the values from the FI side to the controlling side. So we'll be going through the two way outs of creating the cost element. So the creation of cost element whether either primary or secondary can be done in two ways. One is manual creation of cost element and the second is automatic creation of cost element. So the manual creation includes three steps and the automatic creation again involves another three steps. So we'll be going through both of these processes that how we can create manually cost element and how we can go for an automatic creation of cost elements within the SAP system. So moving up with the first manual creation of cost elements, SAP allows you to create primary and secondary cost elements from many places within the SAP system. The most direct location or the most shortest way out to create the cost element is the transaction code. Apart from this, they are the path by which we can create the cost element as well but we'll be moving up with the cost transaction codes which would be the most direct way out and to create in the shortest way out in the SAP system. So as we will be moving up with this first three steps one is to create primary cost element the transaction code for that is KA01 and the transaction code KA02 is for change primary cost element. KA03 is for display the primary cost element. For creation of secondary cost element, the transaction code is KA06. To display KA02, and sorry to change KA02 and to display the cost element KA03 and the third is create cost element groups so that we'll be discussing later on let's move on with the first step that is to create the primary cost element moving on the SAP screen now over here in this we will be executing the transaction code KA01 so as to create the primary cost element manually. So the transaction code is KA01 that is what I have uh, taken up enter and this take us to the next screen which asks you about the controlling area. So the controlling area over here is Z1 zero zero enter now once we entered the controlling area it took us to the next screen that is to create cost element now to create the cost element over here we need to define the cost element number and the cost element number must be the same as of the GL account number for which we are going to create the cost element as already discussed earlier that an income statement account needs a primary cost element so as to flow the value from the financial accounting part to the controlling module. So the income statement account needs a primary cost element and the primary cost element to be created over here on the screen needs that general ledger or the income statement account number to be taken up. 
So how we can decide this? Let's check with the list of GL account first. FS00. Let's check the list of all the GL account with the F4 key on the screen. We have need to take the company code so as to search the GL account for the company code. Enter. So now here we can find the list of the GL account and suppose now I want to create the primary cost element for sales account that is 300000. So what I need to do is I need to take this GL number as the cost element number because the GL account number and the cost element number are similar there is no change among them then we can go to assign the valid date so the valid date basically refers to the validity period of the cost element from when you want this particular cost element to be effective and to which time period you want this to be to be effective you cannot delete the element while it exists within this period of time so suppose I take the date over here as April 1st 2014 so these are the two things which you need to put up over here to create the cost element one is the cost element number and the cost element number is the GL account number it should not be any other number mind it now once you have taken up these two fields we need to click onto the enter screen enter on the keyboard and it take you to the next screen as you can see with this particular number the system has automatically been copied the description of the GL that is the sales account so this is what means that the GL number and the cost element number must be same. Now moving up to the next is the cost element category. So both the primary and the secondary cost element types are broken down further to cost element categories. Categories allow SAP to determine when a cost element should be uniquely utilized within the controlling part. Now within the primary cost element that is what we have been creating over here. The primary cost element are used for direct posting and must be accompanied by a GL account in the FI that is what the GL account number over here is this and if you check the categories on the screen over here the cost element category if you go for the list of different categories in it you will find there are different list of categories in it one is primary cost that is cost reducing re revenues which is used to capture all the primary cost accounting transactions from the financial accounting module that basically means that all the expenses and losses have been taken up have been captured from the cost element category 01 if you move to the next is 3 that is accrual or deferral per surcharge is used in the cost center accounting to post calculated imputed cost. The cost element category 3 is, you, is created in CO only and used for accrual calculations when you are using the percentage method. The next category is 4 that is accrual deferral per debit equal to actual. Under this, this is used in the cost center accounting to post again the calculated imputed costs. 
create in CO only and used during actual calculation when you are using the target is equal to the actual method. Whereas the next comes up is the 11 that is revenues used to post revenues in the controlling module. The revenue revenues are tracked in the profitability analysis within controlling and in the profit center accounting in enterprise controlling. So the revenues transaction or revenues accounting transactions are been taken up with the cost element category 11. The next come up is the 12 that is sales revenue used by CEO to track any sales adjustments or deductions. And the last one is the external settlement 22 used to post any settlement to an object outside of controlling such as an example of such a transaction is settlement from an internal order to a GL account. So out of these different categories the most commonly used is 1 and 11. The cost element category 1 is used for all the expenses GL accounts whereas for revenue or income GL account the cost element category 11 is used. So right now what we are doing is we are creating cost element primary cost element category uh, primary cost element so for that for sales part we need to take the cost element category as 11 as the sales account is a revenue GL and for that revenue category has to be selected. So we have selected the revenue category as 11 over here. Now moving up to the next is the indicators. If you talk about the next fields that is the attribute mix and the functional areas. Attribute mix is this field is optional. It helps to further classify cost elements but they have no control functionality. The attributes do not limit the business transactions. Hence it has been an optional part is not been needed. Moving to the next is the functional area. There are numerous companies that are using functional area and will link these cost elements to a specific functional areas but in today's practical world this has not been used so often. So if you want this functional area to be active you need to fill the different indicators with the functional areas accordingly. Moving up to the next now is the indicators. So within the indicator if you want to record the quantity then in that case you can select this record quantity option and you can select the unit of measure in which you want that quantity to be recorded. The third option come up is default default account assignment in this we can put the cost center or the order that is the cost object to which the the values will flow in the controlling part and then comes up is the history tab in the history tab you can find the uh, then that the cost element been created by which user ID what was the date on which it was been created and if there is any changes been done in the cost element master data then that change document can be taken up as, a, as of now there is no changes exist but in case you make any changes within the primary cost element that can be checked within the history tab in the change document field. So this is how you need to create the primary cost element and then you can go and you can save the screen over here and the cost element will be created. So you can see now the cost element has been created on the screen. Now suppose I have created this cost element and now I want to make certain changes. So to create the cost element we use the transaction KA01. To make the changes within the cost element the transaction used is KA02. 
so let's execute the transaction slash n k a 0 2 enter so you can see the heading over here change cost element initial screen so you need to put the cost element number which you want to change so I have assigned the number over here three zero 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 enter so once you enter it takes you to the next screen for all those details related to the cost element and we can see now there is a sales account then the revenue is 11 category is 11 then there is an indicator over here on the screen then there is default account assignment if you want to make any changes within the the over here on it you can make those changes suppose I make the changes over here as domestic so that is what I have made the changes and I can go and I can save this screen over here so you can see now the cost element has been changed and again I go back again within the cost element master enter and we can go to this history tab over here and if we go and look for the change document you can see the changes will be reflected to you you can see over here the description has been changed so the list of fields changed is the description so once I clicked onto the description over here it shows me the description how it has been changed so the, the earlier old value was sales account and now the new value which has been changed is sales account domestic so similarly whatever the fields you are going to make changes to that particular changes will be recorded over here in this in this change document and along with that they will be able to find out the the date on which it has been changed as well so this is what the change cost element is all about the next come up is the display change cost element display primary cost element the transaction code for that is ka03 so moving on to the transaction slash n ka03 enter again to have a look at the display part we need to assign the cost element over here on the screen and we need to give the cost element number enter so it shows you all the details related to the cost element master data which you can have a look on the display part indicators then the default account assignment and the history as well so this is about the creating the cost element primary cost element then changing the cost element and display the chain the cost element has been done now moving up to the next is create secondary cost element so for creating the secondary cost element there is a separate transaction that is ka06 which need to be executed so it's very much similar to the primary cost element but there is a very sm small differences the categories are different so the transaction is ka06 enter so you can see the same screen is there create cost element as it was for primary cost element but now in this case you can assign the cost element number so suppose I assign the number over here as 900000 we can take the date from and to valid from and to and then we can enter on the screen so as you entered on the screen it takes you to the next screen so now in this case in the secondary cost element you you can have your own cost element number why because the secondary cost element is not dependent on the on the general ledger accounts or on the FA side it is it is within the internally uh, within the internal of the CEO part only so now in this case in the secondary cost element now we can we can assign the, uh, the name and the description so suppose I take the name over here as order settlement similarly I can put the description over here as order settlement of order cost 
now we can move up to the category part so we can enter the category over here on this screen so let's check with the different categories available for secondary cost element so you can see now the primary cost element categories were different and the secondary cost element categories are different so if you are going for an internal settlement then the cost element category 21 has to be taken up so uh, the sec the category 21 used to track internal settlement activity an example of internal settlement is settlement from an internal order to a cost center whereas the another cost element is uh, category is 31 that is order project result analysis used to track results analysis activity from an internal order or a project the category 41 that is overhead rates is used to allocate indirect cost from cost centers to orders or from cost object to another cost object cost element category 42 assessment used during assessment to allocate cost 43 internal activity allocation used to allocate cost like labor and overhead in a maintenance order during internal activity postings category 50 for project related incoming orders that is the sales revenue used to track internal revenue allocations within CU coming from incoming sales order whereas similarly the internal order uh, the category number 51 that is for other revenues used for other revenue tracking the other revenues such as imputed revenue values then the 52 is used for incoming orders that is cost used to track cost from sales orders and the cost element category 61 that is earned value used to track values from project system so these are the different cost element which varies as per the different usage within the the cost the secondary cost element so right now we will be selecting the internal order uh, first that is the, sec the category s21 for order settlement and once you have selected the cost element over here now we can move to the indicator it's very much similar to that of the primary cost element that is the quantity and you can select the unit of measure at the same time then comes the next tab default account assignment where you can select the cost center or the order so you can you can default the cost center or the order in case you want to default for this particular cost element and that the last tab comes with the history which shows you the the user id which has been created by and the date on which it has been created and the change history for this particular cost element part so this is uh, how you need to create the secondary cost element and once you have filled in all the details you can go and you can save the screen and the secondary cost element will be created so as saved you can see now the cost element has been created as below so once this cost element has been created now we can go and we can change this cost element with the transaction ka02 and display with ka03 the same as for the primary cost element so we can go to ka02 enter and we can assign the cost secondary cost element number over here and enter on the screen so it will take you to the next screen and you can make the needful changes if you need if need to be done else you can save and you can move out and similarly for displaying the cost element you can execute the transaction ka03 enter 
and it shows you the display cost element and you can put the cost element number and then enter so it displays you the cost element master secondary cost element master data so this is one of the options of creating the primary and the secondary cost element manually one of the another method to create is you can go with this SAP menu path to directly to the control to accounting and from accounting to controlling and within controlling you can go to this cost element accounting and within cost element accounting there is master data and in master data there is cost element and you can find now there is individual processing and in that you can see that create primary the transaction is k01 to create secondary cost element there is k06 to change the cost element the transaction is k02 and to display the cost element transaction is k03 and in case you want to delete any of the cost element the transaction code is ka04 but you can only delete the cost element until the cost element has not been posted with any of the transactions once any of the transaction or the values has been posted with the cost element then you cannot delete that cost element the system will not allow you to delete it so the cost element can be deleted until they are empty once the values are flown you cannot delete the cost elements so these are the different one of the another way out of uh, from where you can go and you can create the cost elements so this is one of the another way out the next another way out is whenever you create the GL account with the transaction FS00 enter suppose once you have created let's take a GL for that suppose I take a scrap sale and now in this scrap sale enter this is the GL this is for for a scrap sale part that uh, the scrap sales will be so to create the cost element for scrap sales one of the another way out is we can go to this option over here edit cost element so once you move on to this edit cost element and you click on to this it will redirect you to create cost element screen so once uh, when the GL account is created at the same time from over here the cost element can be created as well so this is one of the another way out of creating the cost element for the manual process part so this is what we have covered with the creating primary cost element and then creating the secondary cost element now moving on to the next is create cost element groups cost element group is nothing but a group of cost elements which help one to track and control cost more effectively you can make you can make as many number of cost element groups as you feel necessary by combining various logical cost elements so to create the cost element groups we need to go to the transaction that is kah1 so if you move on to the screen slash n kah1 enter it will take you to the cost element group part so suppose I create a group named as 1000 enter and you can put the description to that like suppose I name it as group A and you can save it so the changes have been saved so from this you can create the cost element group and now if you want to assign the cost element to this group we can we can assign it with the help over here that is the insert cost element 
So within the group, if you want to assign the cost element, you need to go to uh, click onto this cost element option. So as I clicked onto the cost element, you can see now the drop downs have been uh, included over here. So over here on the screen now we can assign the cost element number which we want to be grouped within the group A. So the first number suppose I assign it as 300000 that is for sales. Similarly you can assign it for 300020 for scrap sales. Similarly if you want whatever the different cost element you want to group into one group you can assign those over here and that will be taken up in the group A part. So once these, these cost element has been assigned we can go and we can save this screen. So this is how you can create your own cost element similarly. If you want to go back and want to check the cost element, so similarly, you can create more of such groups and you can assign those cost element to this accordingly, and you can save this screen. So this is how we have created the cost element groups and we have covered with the manual creation of cost element. The next come up is the automatic creation of cost elements. Moving on to automatic creation of cost elements. The automated approach is recommended when you are first creating your cost elements because it is the quickest solution and because you are probably creating your GL master accounts at the same time and also using the automatic batch creation. So at the first time when there are a huge list of general ledger master accounts created there is a need to create a huge list of cost elements and that is very typical or very time consuming to create it manually. So the best way out is to create those automatically in the system. So let's see how we can go for an automatic creation of cost element. The first step in that is making default settings. Now Making default settings can be followed by two way outs in the SAP system. One is the menu path and the second is the transaction code. The transaction code is on your screen that is OKB2 but yet on the screen we will be moving up with the path so that you can even know how to approach the path in the system. So to move on to the SAP path, we first need to go to the transaction SPRO, enter. This takes us to the SAP reference IMG part that is the implementation guide from where we will be following the path. So we need to click on to the SAP reference IMG which takes us to the next screen that is the IMG screen. And in that we can see the controlling. We need to expand controlling part. And within controlling we need to go to this cost element accounting. And in cost element accounting we need to go to master data. Then cost elements. And then you can check over here automatic creation of primary and secondary cost elements. So the path is, system is very simple. First you need to go to controlling, then to cost element accounting, then to master data, then to cost elements and then automatic creation of primary and secondary cost elements and once if you expand this as well over here 
you will find the three options which we need to go for automatic creation of cost element that first is make default settings so if you want to make default settings we first need to go to uh, execute this particular option over here or we can click on to this uh, the symbol on the screen so once we click on to the symbol it asks you the chart of account so you need to assign the chart of account for the company code that is the chart of account is 1000 accordingly you could have your own chart of account whatever you wish is up to create and you need to assign that over here then enter on the screen so once entered it takes you to the next screen and you can see over here that certain number range has been assigned over here the range has been given from and to where the cost element category has been assigned so in the first part that is the account from you need to enter the beginning account range for a specific category whereas in the two we need to put the ending account number range for the specific category part the account range do not have to be in the numeric order the system will adjust them accordingly while executing it so we need to take the from and to range for example if you go to new entries over here we need to assign the from and to range in the system so as to create the cost element for those GL account this account from an account to basically is the GL account number for which the cost element has to be created as a part of primary cost element so we need to assign the numbering suppose I assign it as 30000 that is till 300999 this range I am assigning for the revenue GL account and even we have studied that the third option that is cost element category the cost element category can be looked over here with the F4 key or the drop down menu so we can we can have the drop down over here and you can see in this that there are number of different options both secondary and primary both are are consolidated over here as a category part so as we discussed in the primary in the primary part 1 or 11 is used 1 is used for expenses or losses GL accounts and 11 is used for revenue GL accounts so if you want to assign the revenue GL then you need to select the revenue category over here that is 11 so this from and to is the revenue GL account from and to which has been assigned with the category 11 similarly you can assign the other categories also as per your requirement suppose uh, how we can go for it uh, we can take some other number as well let's check it with the with the account group obd4 for the GL so as we can check that there are number of different ranges created as you can see so if I want to create it for suppose uh, for it's already been created for the expenses so for revenue we have taken similarly if you want to go for sales return now so the sales return account over here is 3002 300 that is what we can take so in that case 3002002 that is what we have taken 290 and now this is basically refers to the sales return so sales return basically refers to sales deduction so with the drop down option we can see for the sales deduction as a category as well that can be selected over here that is what we have selected similarly we can select for the expenses also from 4000 to 
as well and in this the expenses category will be one that is primary cost that is what need to be taken up over here so similarly you may you need to assign your your from and to account range and accordingly you can decide your categories what category need to be assigned to which account and even if you want you can create your secondary cost element over here as well with selecting the internal settlement or order project or assessment or internal activity allocation accordingly so this is how you will be creating your uh, you will be what you can say is you will be defaulting uh, default settings will be done for the account numbers with the cost element category for creation of cost elements in the system so now we can go and we can save this over here and the the default settings will be saved in the system so saving it now so this is what we have saved and as you saved the configurations will will get saved in the request number and as on the screen these are the different account group which has been assigned with the cost element category and for them the different cost element will be created with the later stages to come the later steps to come so this is the first step that is to to default the settings for account number along with the cost element categories now we'll be moving up to the next step that is to define to create the batch input session or we can say defining a batch input session again the transaction code for that is okb3 that is what you can directly execute and you can directly reach out to the screen but else the other way out could be we can move up with the path so we'll be moving up with the path in the SAP screen so as we have done with the first option make default settings we are moving to the second that is to create batch input session so we need to now go and have to execute the second option over here so as I click on to this executor or the symbol over here now it take you to the next screen as you can see so over here we need to define the controlling area so the controlling area can be taken up over here if you don't know the controlling area you can go for F4 so as to search the list from the list of all the different controlling area or the drop down list so we can we can now look off over here the the controlling area is 1200 that is what been selected and then you need to assign the valid from date so be sure that the valid from date is set earlier enough to provide an adequate time frame for any historical loads or allocation in the system you may have noticed by now when we created the primary and the secondary cost element in the manual process earlier you could have noticed that uh, that we have time dependency on the cost elements being created so they have got certain time dependency where it asks you for from and to date as you can see so that it will be it will be used for that particular time time period and if you are not sure about the about the two part or the end part you can leave it as 9999 or even if you want you can restrict it for the number of years till which you want that particular cost element to be used for so the valid from date can be taken up over here as suppose I take it as April 2014 that is what has been taken then the session name can be taken up over here that is the user ID and the batch input session has been taken up that is again the person who is creating his user ID will be covered up over here taken up so this is what you need to do over here on the screen and once this has been done now now to create the batch input after inputting all in after putting the inputs in all these fields we need to go to execute so once I execute it a session log will be created detailing the cost elements created will appear 
so now executing it so as I executed you can see now on the screen that a new screen has been reflected on the system and it shows you the cost element number has been assigned over here with the cost categories cost element categories and the description as well so be sure to review the log for anything that may have left out so this is what the log is all about where you can see that the batch has been created for these three cost element because only for these three cost element the GL account are existing in the system so the more of the GL accounts will be defined in the system and later on you you move up for creating the automatic cost element it will create automatically over here but if the GL account is not created it will obviously not create the cost element because the GL master has to be created first so once the master data has been created in the system it will be available for use until the validity period expires so as and as you go and create your GL master you can come back to this and again create a batch and execute and whatever the new GL master has been defined in the system will be again created over here with the batch so this is the second step which we have done with now moving on to the next step that is the last step and it is about executing batch input session the transaction code is SM35 but else the path over here is is very next step that is to execute batch input session over here on the screen so you can run the batch job online or in the background as well so let's execute it so once I ex click onto the symbol we move up onto this particular screen as you can see now in this screen for performance reasons it is recommended that the program be run in either background or display error only mode so what we need to do is we need to select the batch over here and then we need to go to process session so once I click on to the process it will ask you for foreground display error only or background so that is what for performance reason it is recommended that the batch should be processed either in the background or in the display error only mode when running a batch you can create or you can correct any error if they appear to so what we will be doing is we'll be displaying we'll be executing the batch with display errors only so this is what we have selected and now we will move on and we'll click on to this process so once I click on to the process it will now execute and you can see a new message has been generated it says processing processing of batch input session is completed that means the cost element has been created automatically in the system without any error if you want to see the overview session overview you can click on to session overview of option over here or you can directly exit the batch input so let's see the session overview and understand few things earlier this particular option was not as a tick mark but now after processing it has been greened and then you can see that when uh, by whom it has been created the date the time the program and then you can see the transactions there are four cost element being created without any error the error is zero and successfully been created four so this is how the the batch has been successfully been processed and all the cost element has been created within the SAP system so once the batch has completed without error automatic uh, automated primary cost element creation is complete as we have checked and if you want you can select this and you can go to this log and it take you to the next screen and then you can double click on to this line over here and you will see that it shows four transactions were read 
four transactions were processed that means the 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 batch has been created successfully and if we want to see the cost elements we can go for uh, the display cost element that is ka03 and now we can execute ka03 enter and you can you can go for this drop down option over here which will show you all the list of different cost elements okay so what we can do is there is no chart of account okay so this is the chart of account and the chart of account is used for multiple company codes that's why we can't check over here no issues so this is how when the batch has been processed successfully that means the the cost element has been created so this particular process of creating automatic cost element is done only once at the beginning of the particular software so as to create huge number of cost elements in one go but in a later stages there will be a need to manually create the additional primary and all the secondary cost elements to support your configurations the manual creation process is not found in the configuration menu in the IMG screen but we have checked with the now with the transaction code and the transaction code for manual process has been already checked that is KA01 and KA06 by which you can directly create your manual cost elements or even we have checked with number of other way outs by, for, by which we can create the manual cost elements so this is all about the cost element part where we have covered and we are done with the cost element part over here and this is what we will be doing in, the, in this particular training session and in the next training session we will be covering the, the reconciliation part the reconciliation ledger so see you in the next training session then thank you so much